with a brain damage and a head injury that launched into my spiritual journey. And, um, and it was two years, or yeah, about two, two and a half years later that, that David was brought in in answer to yeah, my prayer, obviously, was just to go go much deeper. And so the first, I think it was about six months or so, that we were traveling together, every afternoon I would start to get a migraine and start to get tired and headachy and had to take my afternoon nap. And by two o'clock every day I needed to be laying down. Uh, and the spirit was so loving and so supportive that David said, OK, I like siestas. <laughs> we can build siestas into the, the plan. And so if we were on the road, we'd get somewhere and arrive and and I'd say, hi, Kirsten, can I go and take a nap? <laughs> and have to overcome this fear of, oh my God, I can't even be sociable. I'm supposed to be a teacher of God, and here I am. The uh, first thing I say is, I'm weak, I need to lie down, can I take a, mm-hmm. take a rest? So there's a lot of undoing happening in my mind, as well as being shown how loved I was, and how the Spirit was meeting me, you know, with just exactly where I was at. And, and then another... Maybe six months or so later, there was still this identification with needing to rest and feeling this tiredness, but a lot of, as well, a lot of magic and miracles had been used over that time. Taking a headache tablet when I needed it, but also being very prayerful about watching when there was pain or stress, watching the doer. And mostly it was the doer coming up, like that personal self coming up, thinking she needed to work hard, being responsible. That's where the contraction was, and that's where a lot of the, more of the headaches came from. So through even using the pain, the physical pain, I was watching my mind and listening, using it for listening, and deeper, really tuning into a loving voice within me that would always say, rest, pray, come back to me. And each time I did that, I would feel the release and then be done through again by the Spirit. So after about a year, we were on a trip and we were on our way to, we were driving in the afternoon and going to have an evening gathering. And it got to the afternoon, about two in the afternoon, and we were still another hour and a half, two hours drive from our destination. I said, okay, it's two o'clock, I need to rest. And here we are in this little car on the side of quite a busy road. And Dad said, well, we, we need to get to this venue. Um, and I said, oh no, I, I really need to rest, we need to pull over. So we did, we pulled over and tried to rest in the car. Dad, this t- tiny little vehicle, David's like six foot tall, kind of moving around in the front seat. It was a little green bug. Um, Under inside. Under inside. <laughs> 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 and, after 20 minutes of this, it was not restful at all. Big trucks <laughs> were flying by. He said, no, we go. We go. And this rage flashed in me, and this hurt, and this upset. Like, you don't love me. If my mother was here, she'd get a hotel <laughs> for me. <laughs> she would look after me. <laughs> yeah, she did say that. My mother would get me a hotel. <laughs> Even though we were in Burrow, Vermont, heading <laughs> off further and further into the woods. <laughs> so I was dealing with all this like lack of love and pain and intensity, and he and David was like, no, we just stayed with the spirit and drove. We got to the destination, and he went in and met people, and I was, I just felt like, oh, I'll just go and take a walk. So I went and took a walk, and I was in prayer, but really I was saying, okay, just. If there's a bear around, I'd quite like to be eaten by a bear. This is where you know, I'd rather die than this. And then after 20 minutes of this, I stopped and went, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Okay, what do I want? Is David really saying that to me because he doesn't love me? Okay, no, that can't be true. Could it possibly be this is the Spirit's plan now? And it's time? And just with that questioning and that asking, and I 
was so obvious, practically, it was, it was obvious, like this, and the whole thing is being orchestrated for my awakening, including the timing of this drive to get to this venue at this time. Either everything's wrong, everything's messed up, he doesn't love me, and this whole thing is just like the ego, you know, and I shouldn't even be on this spiritual journey at all. Or, <laughs> this is the Spirit saying to me, I love you so much, you're ready, take a leap. And I just saw it in that moment, I'm like, okay, I don't want to be identified with this anymore. I don't. I don't want to be identified with this need and this, this head injury. And just with that, I could feel something softening in my mind, and I, I walked back into the venue, and Everyone was sitting there at the table and they were so loving and so kind. I could just feel this presence of love supporting me. And that was basically the beginning of the end of that. Um, and that was three years after the first head injury. I had a second one a year later. But it was time. And from then on, just aligning with, okay, Spirit, this, I don't need this anymore. I can go through this. I can go through this, and then I've got all the thoughts of protectionism. If I don't rest, I'm going to get worse, I'll be tired tomorrow, I'll get a headache, I'll be pain and pain. And it loosened and loosened, and it was pretty quick. It was only really a month or two after that, that I was staying up all day for the first time without needing to rest. Which was profound. just felt so profound. And then not long after that, it was just, then I just didn't notice it. It was literally, it was just gone, washed from my mind. So I saw the whole thing as, was just part of the training. Being loving, and then let it go. And it's time when that development of trust in the spirit is so strong. It's, it's just there. Just trusting that everything comes in its perfect, perfect timing, and everything's sent when it's needed. There, you know, that's how the spirit works. You just have the faith to go forward with what's on your heart, and then you don't know the form of what will show up, but it will be what's most helpful. Yeah. And even receiving disability from from New Zealand for quite a long time. That was, Part of divine providence. <laughs> yeah, it's a miracle. I had a case manager, and I was received when I had the accident. I then received eighty percent of my wage, and uh, and then when it was time to come over to the states, um, I just assumed that it would all end. And I spoke to my case manager and said, "I'm going to go over and be a secretary for this nonprofit, and it's it's all about." forgiveness and peace of mind and it's for the healing of my mind. I can really feel that this is this is it. This is my my path. And she said, Oh we can write that into your plan. <laughs> okay. So she wrote it into my disability plan and then she said, You just call me in three months and let me know how you how you're going. I can just feel this is the spirit. This is not some secret you know, disability government agency in New Zealand. This was the spirit coming up underneath me, everything. You know, the moment I gave my life over to this and said, the whole universe now has one purpose. It's serving my awakening. There is no other purpose but that. And that was it. That unified purpose has just showed, showed me how much support there is. And after three months, I called her and she said, how are you doing? I said, oh, wonderful, really good. Just my energy is much better, my attention is better. I'm just feeling like I'm really healing. And she said, okay, we'll continue for another three months. <laughs> <laughs> so another three months. And after, the, after that three months, I said to David, in all integrity, I can't say I, I need disability anymore. I don't have a disability. <laughs> So then it was time for me to call and let her know, which again, it was all coming from, you know, really identity. What is the support? How much is needed? 